Uh, joining us right now is Laura Morelli. She is an art historian and travel writer. She has haggled and uh, haggled at markets and bazaars around the world. Uh, first of all, welcome to the show, Laura Morelli. Hi, Colin. I'm a longtime listener of your show, and it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. So, first of all, I mean, obviously, it doesn't go exactly the way it did in the Monty Python Life of Brian clip. But once again, I, does it when you're haggling somewhere in a, in a bazaar in Istanbul? Is it really sort of like that? I say he says twenty, you say ten, he says eighteen. I mean, is it is that how haggling is really done? Well, it depends on what country you travel to. Um, In some cultures, especially in the Middle East, haggling is really deeply ingrained in the culture, uh, so much so that people actually train their children from a young age on the art of negotiation. Um, but we, I think we have to realize that in some countries, haggling is, is uh, not at all the, this uncomfortable experience that we Americans sometimes think of it as. It's, um, it's an art. It's a game. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, but I also I'm wondering how much the customs and behaviors vary. You've been a lot of different places, and I'm guess I'm I'm wondering is it the same in in say a place like Turkey as it is in Bangkok? I mean, are people's manners a little bit different, or is it is a haggling a universal behavior? In my experience, it's relatively universal, and I think um, that uh, that the attitude is really the key. Um, certainly, if you don't speak the language of the country that you're traveling to, a smile speaks a thousand words in any culture. Um, and your body language is very important in negotiation, whether you're in the United States or abroad. Um, and those are things that are universal. If, if, um, if the seller... Uh, picks up that you're nervous um, or you're uncomfortable with the negotiation, um, things can go downhill quickly no matter what country you're in. Um, If you're relaxed, if you have fun with it, um, and check your reservations at the door and uh, and, and treat it like like flirting or like a game, like a dance, um, as many people in other countries do, um, the buyer is going to pick up on that right away and things are going to go better for you, chances are. In the negotiation. I guess also, you know, Americans have um, their own specific attitude towards time. And I think we tend to see time is pretty compressed and in, in uh, um, an environment where we want to get things done pretty fast, too. So it's like, I want to go in as quickly as possible, find a cell phone, buy it, get the hell out of here. Um, I'm sensing just even in, in listening to you that in some parts of the world there's almost a pleasure in drawing out this this set of transactions absolutely it it couldn't be more the case i think that um americans by and large are uncomfortable with haggling we we like for the price to be black and white and as you say we like to get to the end of the negotiation as quickly and painlessly as possible um, this is not the case in a lot of other other cultures where um, where haggling is seen to be fun and and an enjoyable and experience. And um, I think that when we travel abroad, if we can let go of our reservations and we can go outside of our comfort zone and look at it as an opportunity for cultural immersion, um, that's where you really bring home memories and, and get the value, um, not only out of whatever you're buying but out of the the cultural experience the uh, are there things now in your house in your life that you look at and you sort of because there is a real satisfaction a lingering satisfaction uh, if there's an object in your life that you bought for some what struck you as an absurdly low or at least intensely satisfying price so are there th- objects uh, around your house that are the result of of haggling that you almost still can't believe you got oh, for what sure. you paid? There, there are many. I mean, you know, I, I collect things as an occupational hazard. <laughs> so, um, you know, if I go to a flea market in France, for example, and, um, you know, pick up a, a, a sterling silver, um, you know, fork or uh, an antique cameo or something like that, um, that is... Um, those are things that maybe um, don't have the same value there that they would to us. Um, you know, for, through our eyes, through American eyes, they, they may be rare. 
um, you know, one of a kind, uh, to someone who is perhaps surrounded by them um, every day, they're, they're not as valuable. And, and particularly if it's something um, that's been handmade, um, that's that's of great value. And um, and that's that's part of the fun, I think, is um, in the souvenir collecting. <laughs> when you come back from your your trip abroad, not only to bring home the the object that you bought, whatever it is, but also to bring home that that experience and the fun of of haggling and the fat, the fun of interacting with the locals. Of course, the, to do that, sometimes you have to be well. You have to be able to haggle maybe in a different language. I I actually have haggled at free, flea markets in in France, and I'm always worried. I, I always go, okay, I just said Caron. Is that forty? Is that? <laughs> I'm just sort of <laughs> worried about this whole other bunch of things. But I just I want to go to those flea markets for a second. I I assume you might even be talking about around the outskirts of Paris, particularly up in the north northern outskirts of Paris. There are these famous flea markets which have been there, you know, since the 1500s or something. And the same stalls have been sitting there. And I, I always feel the opposite of the way that you just said. I always feel they know so much more about everything than I do. How can how can I possibly have any kind of upper hand or even equal footing with these people who've been sitting there running their flea market stand selling stuff to idiots like me for 300 years? <laughs> Well, I can I can tell you a couple of ideas. Give you a couple of ideas. One is, uh, just as in the United States, if you're shopping for a phone, um, do some homework in advance. Mm-hmm. If you know that you're traveling to, let's say, France, for example, or Morocco, do a little reading. Find out, um, you know, what uh, what's typical, what's authentic there, um, and what catches your eye. Do a, a little bit of price research. Um, and I also, a trick that I use is to give myself a limit. It's kind of like going to the casino. I, I will um, pull out a lot of small bills, um, a price that I know I want to pay for something, and put it in my pocket. Mm-hmm. And um, after the negotiation, negotiation has gone on for some time, um, and we're toward the end, I might say, well, um, you know, that's really more than I wanted to pay. I'm sorry. This, this is really all I have to spend. Mm-hmm. And that's when you pull the, the small bills out of your pocket and count them out um and you know that that kind of visual display of of money as well as you know the the proof that this really is all i have in my pocket Mm -hmm. and sometimes really close the deal and that's a good a good thing to do particularly if you don't speak the language the, uh, we're talking uh, to to our guest, Laura Morelli, right now. She's an art historian uh, and uh, a world traveler and an, obviously an experienced haggler. And I wanted to say, actually, one thing that you just said. First of all, I think I've actually I, – I think I'm an inept haggler, but I did buy a leather jacket at one of those flea markets, and I think I got a good price. And that whole thing of just showing them the money that you've got, because it at least suggests – that th- this is some kind of ceiling, you know, maybe you don't have any more money at all, particularly if you look very sadly at it or something. But um, it's something Jeff Yeager, we didn't, I didn't draw this out of him when he was on, but even here in the United States where nobody ever buys anything with cash, apparently when you buy things with cash when you're haggling here in the United States with, you know, some, and not at a flea market, but at some, you know, established retailer, that's a good thing. Cash is good somehow. It's, a, it's more attractive. It, it helps you right. haggle. Um, Well, Laura Morelli, thank you so much for joining us. Now that you know the way, don't be a stranger. It was great talking to you. Oh, nice to talk with you, Colin. Thank you for having me. All right. Bye-bye.